What does it mean for you uh, getting this award? Well, of course, I'm very pleased and I'm also very pleased for my many colleagues with whom I work together. So I think there's a very pleasant recognition of the work we've been doing over many years. To our knowledge, this is the only international award devoted to research in the field of climate change. Was it about time? Well, I think uh, we as climate scientists can't really complain about lack of publicity because, of course, climate change is such an important problem for society. But, of course, we're always very happy if this is recognized also in the project. We're very glad that the uh, Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change received the Nobel Prize for the, its work, and uh, I'm also very pleased with this award, of course. What do you think about the recent Copenhagen Climate Summit? And what can we expect from global politicians in the close future? Well, I think we were all very disappointed. We expected very much more based on the discussions that we'd heard before in the political domain. And we really hope that the uh, governments will understand that they have a common problem to solve here and they cannot attack this problem. The usual idea of competition between different countries, we have to solve this jointly. So I really hope that the uh, disappointed response of the media will also stimulate the politicians to find better solutions for the future. Must we assume that the planet will be more than two degrees warmer and not so distant future? If we do not change our policies, this is definitely the result. Uh, if we continue with the present policies, we can expect a warming of three to four degrees centigrade. And nobody can predict what the outcome will be, but at, at, at all events, it will be a large impact on our way of life. And uh, we can only hope that the politicians will respond to what the public ex is expecting from them, namely that they're trying to tackle this problem. Are the consequences of this well known? I think this has been presented very much in the literature. There have been always the uh, backlash from the skeptics who are afraid of, of change and try to argue against it. But I think it is now generally recognized and understood that we do have a major problem here and that we do have to respond to it. So I think the public is expecting that the politicians re react to the problem. Okay. What is the main obstacle in the fight against climate change? Economic, technology, political? I think the main obstacle is that the, the politicians and the public are not aware of the fact that the problem is quite soluble. Uh, we have the technologies and it's a question of investing these, in these technologies. And if we do it this correctly and make use of the pr present recession that we have, I think it is quite possible to respond to the and, and solve the climate problem without a major impact in our way of life. And I think this, this understanding that the problem is soluble and can be done, can be uh, attacked without a large uh, de a decrease in our way of uh, standard of living is, has to be understood by the public and also by policy policymakers. Then I think they will actually pursue the right policies that we need. How can climate scientists in general contribute to solving the climate change? Well, I think scientists have done a very good job in explaining that we do have a climate change problem. They have explained the origin of the global warming and the rate at which the global warming would increase unless we do something about it. But I think scientists should contribute much more strongly to the analysis of the economic impacts and the economic solutions that we have to prevent, prevent future climate change. In other words, how should we uh, invest the different technologies, uh, which countries should invest how strongly. These are things that the politicians are struggling with and where scientists, I think, can contribute to a better analysis of the problem.